to accept. Okay. Are you ready? We're recording. <laughs> Here we go. Um, I'm super excited to have this conversation with you guys. So I want to introduce Ariel and Kyle. Um, Ariel and Kyle Tresh. So I met Ariel first. We had a conversation. Um, and then I met Kyle. What was it, Ariel? Like a year and a half? Two I was going to say like a year-ish later. A year-ish. Yeah. Like Actually, I think it might have been almost exactly because it was around that October, November time frame, right? I think so. Yeah. Okay. So um, it's kind of a funny story how we all met because I talked to Ariel and then literally like felt she fell off the planet. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> but like life stuff happens, right? Everything was changing in her world. And then she like popped up out of nowhere a year later. And so why don't you um, share a little bit about that story first, Ariel, and how I met Kyle, because then I ended up um, coaching Kyle for like, what, almost probably about nine months. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Not, I yeah. Think, yeah. After that. So, um, and we just wanted to kind of share your guys' story uh, because I think you guys are amazing people and we had a lot of fun coaching together. So Ariel, why don't you first, why don't you introduce yourself, maybe give a little bit of background about like who you are, what you do, um, and then um, share the story of kind of how we met and what happened in our coaching session and then yeah. how that led to me coaching Kyle. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So first of all, yep, my name is Ariel and um, I am one half of the couplepreneurs duo. So Kyle and I actually work with entrepreneur couples, help them market and scale their businesses online. Um, you know, both of our expertise is in marketing and I actually started with uh, organic marketing. That was kind of how, you know, Leah, you and I got connected is I was an organic marketing coach and I know that, you know, we had gotten connected on the online world somehow mm -hmm. and I came onto your podcast and that was how we were in uh, initially connected. And uh, we, we recorded the podcast and I remember I was talking to you and in that line of work, I had connected with a lot of coaches, a lot of, you know, life coaches, mindset coaches, a lot of different people in that industry. And I remember during our conversation, I like had this little thought in my mind of like, I know a lot of coaches and I, I say this with love, but not all of them have the level of expertise that this woman has. And as I was talking to you, I was like, I was like, she knows what she's, she knows what she's doing. She knows what she's talking about. So after we recorded, I told you that. And I was like, Leah, I, I think like everything that you said, everything, like I can tell that you know what you're doing. And um, I remember saying like, I would love to connect you with anybody that I know needs a mindset coach of your level and of your skill set. And you were like, yes, but <laughs> I require out of integrity that, you know, you, you experience my coaching firsthand. So that way you feel confident and, you know, referring me to people. So, which I loved that about you, first of all. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I was like, okay, so we, we set up a coaching call. So that way I could like get a, get a taste of what it is that you actually did. And I remember, do you want me to go into that specific call or do you just want Sure. To why not? Like it, this is your story. So what would you tell if it was like your sister or your BFF, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Because I think that like for people listening, they want to know like the real story, you know? So whatever you're comfortable sharing. Yeah. So well, it, this gets real. Oh, it, right. does. it does get real. So here we go. So on our call together, I remember I came into it thinking we were going to work on like time management or something. Right. And you know, it's not, you never go into like, what, what is the actual problem? So <laughs> I was like, okay, I, I have so much to do and I can't get it all done. Leah, help me like manage my time better, get more things done. And um, that somehow progressed into you, like with, with like laser beam focus, <laughs> figured mm -hmm. out that there was something a little bit deeper. Yeah. And um, it was, I remember we started talking about um, a job that I had. I used to be a marine biologist and um, long story short, that was a job that I had spent my entire life working for my entire life wanting, like that was my dream job. And I got it, I achieved it. And at the time you and I were talking, um, I had actually left that job, I think about a year prior. And I essentially had a lot of buried things that had happened after I left that career. And at the time, I think it was, um, you know, you, you essentially came in and you were like, okay, you were, you were digging deep, but I wasn't quite sure what we were going to find. But essentially what had ended up happening was I had held, I, I don't know if I want to use the word trauma, but a lot of trauma around leaving something that I'd worked so hard for. I felt very guilty of giving up something that I'd worked for years to achieve. And I felt very um, guilty for a lot of other reasons of like why I actually left that job. And the 
politics, the, the games that a lot of people in that, in that, that I was working with were playing, there was a lot of guilt that I had that maybe like I played into it and I was a part of it. And so there was a lot of guilt that maybe I hurt people that I didn't want to hurt. There was a lot of guilt for leaving a job that I worked so hard for. And all of this was stuff that I had no idea even existed. <laughs> <laughs> and what I will say is, um, you know, when we kind of went there, um, I, first of all, had no idea any of it existed, had no idea if we were even going to go there or get there in our call together. And what I do remember is prior to that, I actually always had this dream where uh, about that old career. I always had this dream. It was like a basically a re re reoccurring nightmare um, of leaving that career and having this big blowout with my boss at that time. And I just always had nightmares where like we, there, there was, it was just a very, very dark dreams basically. And after our call together, you know, I had had those dreams for probably on a, almost a weekly basis for that entire year since I left that job. And I didn't even know, we didn't even talk no. about you having dreams in nope. that. I actually didn't even find out that you had had dreams until I talked to Kyle a year later. Exactly. And I didn't, even, I didn't, yeah, so I didn't even connect the dots at the time. Um, but cause to me, I was just something that I just, you know, I quit the job. I left. I just like, was like, okay, I'm done. And that was it. I had no idea that there was some deeper stuff going on, but I had this reoccurring dream for uh, at least a year for at least once, if not more a week. And I mean, they were like nightmares were like, it would wake me up constantly. And I, I wasn't sleeping well. And I had all of this, you know, probably a lot of tension and everything that came with it. And I remember after our call, not only was our call like just incredible, like again, I knew, you knew that you, what you were doing, but, um, and I didn't realize that there was so much of that stuff that was buried that like we had kind of pulled out. But what was the most transformative thing was I went to sleep that night and I didn't have that dream. Another week went by and I didn't have that dream. And then I would say, when did I tell you this? Maybe a month or two later, I finally like told him, I was like, Hey, so Lee and I had that call and I had had that re reoccurring nightmare for, you know, a year. I'm like, I haven't had that dream since. And basically, so that was what a year, year and a half ago. And mm -hmm. I have not had that dream since. Wow. In fact, the only dreams that I've had about that job has been maybe like a handful of times in the last year, year, year and a half. And they've only been positive. I literally have like goosebumps all over my body. Yeah. Oh, I love it. <laughs> so instead of having a nightmare that was keeping me awake, like the dreams that I have now, which are very infrequent, but the ones that I do have are usually like me and my boss are like, we're very cordial. Life is good. And it's like a, it's a completely different experience. And that level of tension that I think that I was carrying is just gone. That just makes my heart so happy. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Talk about proof though. Of what yeah. you, just the power of just one coaching session exactly. i mean like that was, was just, one that was a, that was a coaching <laughs> session one. that that leah offered just to like yeah give you a taste of what she exactly could do. and just that little bit of taste is like you just so happen to cure a recurring nightmare for yeah. years like, yeah. and you didn't even pay for that session <laughs> no right, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> like that was, that was the best part <laughs> yeah and that that's why like I remember um I, I don't know what actually uh, maybe I'll let you tell that I don't mm -hmm. know actually what kind of brought on the idea of Kyle getting a coach but we were just kind of talking about it one day and I was like I, I honestly think I'm like there, there's probably very few coaches that I honestly trust you know right. when, you're, when you're um going to those more vulnerable places it's it's hard to trust the person that you're talking to but in addition to that it's hard to trust their skill set sometimes and when, you know, we were talking about him uh, potentially getting a coach, I remember thinking like the only person I would trust is Leah uh, because of that experience that I had. So mm -hmm. um, I think that's when I sent you a message and I was like, hey, it might be good for you and Kyle to connect. Right. And then you guys did. And now well, you I just can tell it, your side of so the story. It, it's so crazy how I, all this actually, now that we're like kind of reliving it, yeah. just how like God almost orchestrated all this to work because Ariel knew she wanted to refer you to somebody, but didn't necessarily have anybody at the moment. And lo and behold, the person that she would refer to you was her own husband, you know, like she didn't, we didn't, we, we totally did not expect for that. But, you know, when, when, when that was happening, it was just during a time where I was experiencing more stress and more mental turmoil and friction than ever before. And, and that's kind of why Ariel fell off the planet, right? Because I was supposed to have a follow-up yeah. call with her, but then stuff happened in your guys's, yeah. in your life, right? For right. you, Kyle. And so she just kind of was like, went into like, I need to take care of family stuff right now, yeah. right? 
Yeah, I, I, I was off social media. I was off everything for a while. Yeah, because that was like, it was like the perfect storm of so much happening that year. Yeah. It, was, it was 2020, you know, and everyone obviously watching probably has their own 2020 story for, but for us, like, it was so crazy because even pre-pandemic, there was so much going on in our lives. Yeah. Like, we, we were launching a new business, but like, as anybody who's watching this knows, if you're an entrepreneur, anytime you start going towards the thing that you feel called to do or that you want to do, that's where like all of a sudden all this trauma and all these demons that you didn't even know you had, they start showing up in your life. And like, not only did I have that going on, but there was, you know, I, I, I reached like a point in my life. Um, it's just like harsh reality hit me all at once from so many different angles of life. I met a lot of role models that I used to look up to when I was a kid and like, was very disenfranchised with the fact that the people that they actually were, were very different from the people that I thought they were. Mm -hmm. And a part of my identity was like attached to them. I didn't know it at the time, but part of my identity was attached to them. So that way when I met them and I realized, okay, they're not exactly who I thought they were. Mm -hmm. um, like part of me and my own identity was like dying with these like role models. It was almost like if anyone's watched Harry Potter, I always call them like the Horcruxes, it the Horcruxes right? Yeah. It's like when Voldemort puts his Horcruxes into other people and like lives vicariously through all these other people. Well, my whole life was like that. Yeah. My whole life, like my business, my, uh, my personality, everything I've constructed up until that point in my life was based off of like modeling and feeding off of other people that I looked up to. And when I met them all and all of that went away, like I didn't realize it at the time, but like all of a sudden I was going through an identity crisis. I didn't even know who I was. I, there was a time where I looked at Ariel and I was like, I couldn't even tell you what my favorite yeah. color was. Like, honestly, I don't know what my personal favorite color was. He began second guessing everything. He's like, is this my idea? Or is this this other person's idea right. that I like attached my identity to? And he couldn't, he didn't, he didn't know anything about who he actually was. So as, as you can imagine, what trying to build a business when you have all of these things going on in your head is just so hard. It was like so much friction and trying to grow anything. And as a result, we weren't able to like mm -hmm. our, our income completely decreased. Um, we, we were renting a house at the time. We just had gotten married. We were living in this wonderful house. And then all of a sudden, like because of COVID and everything else that started to happen, like we ended up getting, um, like nothing, we didn't do anything wrong, but the landlord decided he wanted to sell that house and we had no place to live. Very so, quickly. Very, so in during, in during the pandemic, we were like, literally had the identity crisis, business was failing, no income. And then all of a sudden, like we have no other place to live. Yeah. <laughs> so like, okay. A lot of things are going on. I want to do a timeout for one second. Cause I want people to understand Kyle, what was happening right before that? Because nobody here knows exactly what you were doing like in the world of business before that, which was pretty massive as well, right? Like, oh yeah. You had, so give people a little bit of background too on like some of the level of work that you were doing before you guys were like, oh, let's build our business, right? Because oh, yeah, you've, yeah. you've had some pretty amazing aspects inside of that as well, so. Oh, thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, um, yeah, so up until that point in my life, I was a digital marketing consultant for many years and, you know, by God's grace, I, like by the time I think it was 26, right? 26 years old, I was the CMO of a tech company, which is like every you know kid's dream. I didn't go to college, but I did. I just learned from experience how to grow companies. So at that point, prior to like going off and building a new business venture, I had already worked with a variety of different companies and coaches and generated multiple, multiple tens of millions of dollars online. So like at that point, I've experienced a lot of success. We self-funded our wedding. We like we had like the dream life prior to all of this, you know. Like we we basically lived the American dream three times over. And yeah. um, you know, again, I say that all glory to God, but just very grateful for the success that we had up until that point. So the the reason why I think it's really cool that you brought that up, though, is like. <laughs> We were at a very, very high high. And then when we went through the situation, it took us to the, like the lowest of low. Yeah. Because actually within a year, we went from super high income, super like on top of the world, got married, everything's perfect, to like literally a year later, um, having no income and about to lose our house. It so was a hard fall. It was a very yeah. hard fall. <laughs> yeah. And so then I, so then when did Ariel, so Ariel, so then you guys, set aside that business because everything was falling apart and you went back to working for somebody else instead of building your own thing, right? Well, yeah, because at that point we were like, okay, we need to just get more clients, yeah. you know? So um, 
you know, fast forward, we, we all glory to God, we did find a new place to live and we did, we were able to replace our income and it actually like, you know, three X in return as I was working and consulting with other companies and Ariel's coaching business, like re-exploded again. So that part was awesome. However, as a result of that season in our life, even though our financial needs were met again, even though our, our housing needs were met again, that didn't mean that everything in this mind was recovered. In fact, it was like the worst it's ever been. I've never been in a place where I made more money, but felt more depressed than ever before. Like it's such is, a dynamic. And this is crazy because I remember when we first met, like when we, and when we were first doing, doing some coaching together, I remember some of the numbers that, that you were kind of throwing my way about some of the things that you're doing for that company and what that company's trajectory ended up becoming during that time. Like, I mean, yeah. they, I can't even remember, maybe you remember the numbers, but I can't even remember like how many millions the company made just in that first beginning when you started working with them and you took over basically because Leah, like kind of like their um, chief marketing yeah. officer, right? And you like led their program and they were making millions of dollars. And what would you remember what it was? It was like 23 million that they made well, in no, that time I, or something. I can't remember the number. I, but. I know within a six month time frame we were able to add $37 million worth of projected revenue. Yeah. And what was even cooler is we doubled the size of the company in, I think it was like a nine month time yeah. frame. So, and, and this, these are big companies. So we were, they were, we were able to create 30 new jobs and like all the jobs were very high paying jobs, many of them in yeah. the six figure range. So like, yeah. yeah, we were able to generate a lot so, um, for that company. Yeah. So I just want to bring that kind of into context here so that people can understand that that's what you were, that was the level you're performing at. Yeah. Right. And then, and so on the outside, everything looked amazing. Mm -hmm. Right. But like you said, is on the inside, you still felt kind of like broken. Right. Oh, totally. Yeah, which and that was kind of when Ariel sent me a message and said, hey, my husband needs a coach and I want you to coach him. Can he talk to you? And then I said, yeah, sure. So we met, we had a conversation and I remember it was really funny because literally, Kyle, you were so ready that you were like, um, we, we couldn't, I, we got off the call. And before we even got off the call, you said, okay, I'm sending money. I'm sending the full payment right now. Can we start our first session tonight? Yeah, that's right. I remember that. Yeah, because I needed, I, I knew at that point in my life, I knew the importance of coaching. Yeah. I knew the importance of mentorship. I've had business mentors left and right. And I, I remember even Ariel having the conversation with Ariel. And I think she even said like, you don't need a business mentor. You need like a yeah. life mentor. You need like someone to work with your mind. And I was like, okay, well, who's the best person? And of course you were the first person. Actually, you're the only person the she only recommended yeah. because even after working with so many other mindset coaches, yeah. we trust you over everybody else. Yep. So yeah, so <laughs> that's the fast forward. I remember not only did we get on the call and out like very quick to, to action, but I, I don't know if you knew this, Leah, like Ariel, <laughs> Ariel went to book a call with you on your calendar and like the, the call itself was like scheduled for the way you had for your him. calendar set for up him. for me. Yeah. yeah, the way you had your calendar set up, it, would, it, it didn't allow us to have a call with you until like next week at like 9 p.m. And I was like, no, we need to go earlier than that. So I was like, can you just message her and be like, hey, can we get on a call like tomorrow? And then you and I got on a call. And what was so crazy is like, I told you some of the things I was going through. I didn't really know how to put words to it. And just like what Ariel said, you were able to like pierce through everything I was saying. And you knew like exactly what the problem was, where the root was, what we needed to do. You mapped out a plan. And I'm like, okay, let's go. <laughs> right? And like, yeah, right then and there, I remember, yeah. Um, we were like, oh, should we think about it? Maybe a little bit. It took like, you know, 10 minutes to think about it. And like, yeah, immediately just sent over the money and like got started that same day. I think it was like a couple hours of difference in between that yeah, first. Yeah, call. yeah, yeah. I had to like rearrange my evening a little bit, but I was like, yeah, let's just do this. Let's just jump into this. You're so ready. And um, yeah, so it was super fun. So uh, why don't you share a little bit about your coaching journey, because we did three months and then you renewed and you did another four months with me. And so why don't you share a little bit about like what transpired during that coaching for you? Um, yeah. And then I'd love to hear from Ariel what her perspective was as the spouse from the outside in the changes that she saw in you. Yeah. So do you, if you guys are open to sharing some of that, that'd be awesome. Oh of gosh, of course. Yeah, I'll, we'll share as much as you want us to share. <laughs> uh, and and uh, as much as actually, I should say as much as you let us share, because there's so much yeah. that... There's so much that happened. I'm going to, I'm going to try my best to remember um, some of the key points and some of the key highlights. So yeah, the first initial session we did, I remember because I was so gung ho, 
the same gung ho drive that got us to do a call and then start the same day it was also <laughs> the same drive that was like, no, I wanted to make, I want to do two coaching calls a week. Like, I don't want to do just once a week. I want to do two right. a week. That's so, right. like, the, the first client that I've ever had that was, that was like, okay, let's double this up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I needed help. Okay. I, I, I yeah, got to he, the point. he came to me and he was like, I think that's too slow. We need to do twice a week. Yeah. We need to move. <laughs> we need to move. Uh, so, and maybe people are watching this that are driven entrepreneurs. Maybe you guys can relate. And honestly, I'm so glad I did because it felt like, like, I, I, I kid you not every single coaching call that we did, there was at least one, if not multiple, like breakthroughs and yeah. like big ahas about like, okay, that's why I'm thinking and perceiving this situation that way. That's why I'm self-sabotaging myself. No wonder I'm not able to get to a certain level that I want in my business or in my relationship because I'm subconsciously sabotaging that as I go and as I'm doing these things. No wonder I'm experiencing these problems. Well, you know, I was going through an identity crisis and didn't even know it. And um, one of the big things that, at least in our first, like our first sprint sessions, you know, the, those periods of a couple of months, one of the biggest things that came away from that first one is just honestly being able to rebuild my own identity. Mm -hmm. And there's so many people probably watching this that don't even know that whether they, you go through failures in business or you go through failures in your relationship, anything that you externalize your identity to, you might not realize it, but when those things go away, like part of yourself goes with it. And one of the things, Leah, that you helped me do so well was to kind of rebuild that identity and decide honestly, maybe even for the first time ever, like, no, this is who I want to be. This is who I want to show up as. And this, these are the type of character traits that I want to exemplify in my life. So I like, I know there's a million different like epiphanies from that first session, but I would say the biggest one was just honestly getting a footing of who I was again. Like, yeah. And, yeah. and then I think too, if I remember correctly, like some of the things that we did inside of that space as well, is that we spent time, um, removing and shifting what happened with the horcruxes, right? We ended up saying, like, we ended up putting a barrier between you and them and looking at who you were separate from them, them right? And then I remember we also did some work around um, really going forward once you did kind of build your new identity, going forward, recognizing how to not reattach to other things after that and separating the who I am versus what I do, right? Because right. specifically I've noticed with my male coaching clients, um, when it comes to career, there's a lot of attachment in their identity of who they are connected to what they do. And so they emotionally respond with anything that happens in business and they take it personally. Right. right. Yep. And so being able to learn how to separate those things and it's like, okay, if, you know, if a client responds this way, or if, if, you know, a customer responds this way, it's not a personal attack on me. They're, they're having an issue with, with something that's happening inside of business. Right. And we can look at it from a, you know, owner, you know, president viewpoint and deal with that that way rather than taking it as a personal issue, right? So true. Yep. Oh my yeah. God, true. And I remember too, like speaking to some of the the work that we were doing, some of the techniques that we were using, you know, there were some that like, it, it honestly, some of the, maybe even some of the visualizations that we were doing, it really got me to have different associations with people in my life, um, appreciating like the, going back to the role models, for example, appreciating the work that they've done in my life to get me where I am, but moving on and kind of carrying the torch from there yeah. and changing the relationship. It, it, instead of like a hero worship or instead of like a complete shun, it was just a very objective like appreciation, but maturity level of growing up and going further. And I, and I use the word maturity on purpose because there was a lot of times that we discussed like kind of like you know, the adult way to perceive certain circumstances and situations. Uh, a lot of times when I was starting off on new good habits and uh, doing what I should be doing to improve my life and to improve my mindset, there would be times where I would be tempted to go back to the original sources and the original, like maybe watch videos of my old role models or whatever. And I remember that you reframed it so well. You're like, it's, it's, it's the equivalent of a child going back and playing with their GI Joe toys. And I remember like that little twist was like, okay, you know what? Like, she's so right. Like I, I'm a man now I can stand up. I can build my own identity and I don't have to be reliant and, and dependent on the opinions or external forces around me for my identity. So that yeah, was right. And actually there's, there's kind of a phrase for that. It's called personal per, or it's called, um, 
permanent personality, right? Okay. And that's kind of what we do is in childhood, in the teen years, we, we identify and develop who we are in the world. And a lot of it is based on how the world, how we perceive the world perceives us, right? right. And, and so we kind of build that. And, and then we, we end up spending a lot of the beginning years or a lot of even, I've worked with some clients all the way up into their, you know, 70s almost or 60, late 60s, 70s, who are now being like, oh, hey, you know, this is, this is just something I've always done. And it's linked back to something that happened when they were 10 years old. Right. right. And so they, they're holding on to that personal, per, that permanent personality trait from that point as an identity of who they are at that point. Right. Rather than allowing themselves to grow with their, with their body. Right. And with their age. So yeah, for sure. That's, that yeah. we, we played around with some of that. <laughs> Oh yeah, we did. Yeah. And even as you're saying this too, I remember so many things that it, it, it was just so cool to, to have you shine a light on some of these areas where there'd be some areas where I might operate from a very mature perspective. And there are other areas, and I'm sure we we're all guilty of this at some level, where we kind of regress back to like how we might have seen our parents handle stress as a kid or how we, like there have been times where you would call me out and be like, you know, that you're, you're, you're handling the situation from that version, that 16 year old version of yourself that perceived life this way, right. and formed this way, you know, and that right. was, yeah, so yeah. And that's, and a big part of that is because, you know, if something important happened at that time in your life, mm -hmm. right, something important that was emotionally charged at that point in your life, maybe somebody felt, made you feel, made you feel inferior or, um, like, um, or maybe um, I don't. I don't. I'm trying to think of the right words for this, but sometimes it's inferior. A lot, oftentimes it's um, like a, or betrayed or things like that. And usually it's a negative emotion that kind of locks it in because it sets us into like a fight, flight, freeze type scenario where our then not only does our mind take a picture of that moment in time being like, I hate this feeling. I never want to feel powerless like this again. But our entire nervous system has all of the, all of those same like picture. And so even just bringing the memory back, your entire body will respond the same way it did that moment. Right. As soon as if you think of the memory, you're like, Oh, my stomach hurts again, or this hurts, or I can smell that. Right. So your whole nervous system remembers all of that as well. And so as adults, right. If, if there's a mirrored experience that we're having there as an adult, right? All of a sudden our brain goes, oh, I know how to respond to this. And it jumps back to that. And all of a sudden, and we've all seen this, right? We've all seen, you know, adults having like temper tantrums. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. yeah. Just driving on the freeway in Florida, you'll see that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's take a break for one second. I want to hear from Ariel, like in that first stint, Ariel, what was your perception from the outside? What did you see that was changing in Kyle while we were working together for those first three months? Yeah. So I will say one of the things that like we <laughs> we actually like started to kind of look forward to your calls together. <laughs> That's a like, good point. Yeah. It would be like um, it'd be like okay, like go work on your brain now. Like <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> there've been times like maybe in our discussions I'll start spinning out. She's like Leah, where's I, I, Leah? I'd be like, when's your next call with Leah? <laughs> That's so funny. And so like it, it became such a like because after his calls with you, like I could just tell that like yeah. whatever was spinning him out that was affecting so many different areas of his life, whether it was, you know, our relationship, whether it was, you know, our work, whatever it was, um, you know, sometimes he would go those three, four days, like in between your calls and like, he would kind of start to spin out on something and it would radiate across all these different areas of life. Mm -hmm. And then he would have a call with you and he'd like walk out of his office and like his shoulders were like down, like you could just tell he was much more relaxed and like, you could tell like there was some sort of weight that was lifted. And um, that, at, you know, those first couple of months, like, yeah, it became such a, almost like he would walk into the office, a different person than he would walk out. And I, one of the things that I would say is like the biggest transformation is him being able to make decisions and trust himself to make those decisions and not be second guessing. And, and, you know, again, kind of like spinning out, like he would like, you'd be like, well, you know, pr previously he would be like, well, is this my decision? Is this the right decision? What if I make the wrong decision? And he would have all these oh, questions yeah. going to where, you know, he'd have the, a few of these calls with you. And then like, he got to a point where he could confidently make decisions. Mm -hmm. He could make them faster. And if it didn't go the way that he anticipated or planned, he could just redirect and, and come up with a quick solution rather than spinning out in the fact that he quote unquote failed. 
Mm-hmm. That's the biggest thing. I don't even know if I've ever even told you. I that. was gonna <laughs> say I've never. I personally never heard that. This is the first time, and like because yeah. we've never talked about it. But yeah. like that, as you're talking about this too, like I can I can see that. I can mm-hmm. see how I would go into our calls. I would go into our office and do our call with you, Leah. Well, I would go in there one way, and I would come out a completely different yeah. way. And um, one of the things that she said too that. I think it's only just gotten better and better as we continued our work together is um, we would do a, a visualization together where you would have me and I still use it to this day, by the mm-hmm. way, um, you know, we, we would, you would have me kind of look at the version that I want it to be of myself and start making decisions in the present based on who I want to be in the future, not based on the, the, the version of me in the past. And that was um, extremely important because I think that just anchored that change as I was working and moving forward. And I think that's still, honestly, it still helps me to this day. I'm still getting better and better by the day of making decisions in the present based on how I want to be in the future. Awesome. That's so cool. Thanks so much for sharing that. I love that. Um, Is there, I'm just trying to think if there's, um, so then we kind of went back into, we did some more work together. We did four more months working together after that, right? Um, And in that time, you actually ended up leaving that other company that you had then created your new security around. And within like seven months of, of like making this company millions and millions of dollars, they offered you a full-time position to be their CFO, right? And, or CMO, what, how was the acronym? CMO, yeah. CMO, CMO, right? And you turned them down because you're like, no, I'm an entrepreneur. Like, I don't, like, like that, (laughs) no. You know, it's so funny too, because like, I, I remember, of course, that that has happened, but like reliving it, it just like kind of makes me laugh. Because, Whenever we tell somebody else about it, they're like, why would you do that? No, He's because, like, because I knew, me. because it, <laughs> I mean, I, you know, that's, that's why I keep saying like God ordained all this. Cause like the timing could not have been better for you and I to work on that. Cause yeah, I would go into these meetings and they would offer like this, uh, that one, I think it was the August of 2021, they would go, I went into a meeting with the president of this company that basically offered me half a million dollars right around there most likely you know right around that number to become a cmo for the company like all the best benefits in the world and like i could not only say no to it like it wasn't even a doubt in my mind like it, i just knew like okay i know that my worth is way higher than this we um ariel and i have a dream of helping other entrepreneur couples in yep. business and there's all these other businesses that we want to create, I've helped other companies make millions of dollars. Why in the world would I settle for monopolizing all my time for what? 400, $500,000 a year. Like that's, that's no way. Like that's so stupid. So like, <laughs> I, so it's funny to say this and anyone watching, I don't mean to say pop. Like, I know that for many people that would be like a dream come true, but for me personally, we work so well on, on being able to understand where my calling was and where my identity was and yep. what I needed to do that it made it very easy to turn that down. Yeah. And so that was when couplepreneurs was actually birthed, right? That's like yeah. <laughs> that was when that was when you're like, hey, I have this idea. I think I want to do this. And I was like, okay, cool. Let's let's <laughs> like I and and I pushed you to like, okay, make a timeline for it, make your this and that. I'm like, you guys know how to do your job. I'm like, I want this in your calendars. And I remember like you just took it and started running with it. And and then um, you know, things transitioned into a point where you guys had it up and running. And then the company, of course, at that point decided, well, we'd still have this position to fill. And so they filled the position and because you had rejected it, they said, okay, then we're not working together. Like it it ended, right? But it was perfect timing for you to fully come in. And you guys now had an entire new company of your own device, like design built and and running, right? At that time. A hundred percent. And literally every single step of the way and everything you just said, I was so grateful to have you in my corner because like there were times like those, you know, even though I still turned down that position, going all of a sudden us, us in our life making a giant turn towards, no, I'm not going to take all the security. We're just going to launch this new business. Like that's turning back towards the same thing that triggered all of that trauma in the past. If you, you, yeah, the year previous, right? Yeah, exactly. But, but thankfully you were here because I was able to like reframe the entire situation and understand that even though it was a similar pattern, 
the actual circumstances were a hundred percent different. I was a grown, I was a wiser person. I was, I uh, had different experience. What were you going to say? I was a grown, I was man. grown up now. <laughs> I'm an adult now, but yeah, no, but like you were able to see that and you're um, like, even the time in which, you know, um, kind of part of ways with that company, we were walking into the wild, great unknown. Like we're walking away from, you know, just hundreds of thousands of dollars and just being like, no, this is what we want to do. Even though we know we're going to start from zero and along that way, you said something that I just want to share here because it was so impactful. And I still think about it to this day when I was trying to figure out, okay, do we need to, are we going to launch a couple preneurs or do I build this over here? Do I build this over here, build this over here? You told me this and, and we actually tell our clients now too. Yeah, um, <laughs> like if you're going to commit to something, why don't you commit to it with the same level of commitment that you would commit to your spouse? So we like, committing to building this business like we would commit to our marriage is honestly what allowed me to go you know what no this is like I feel like this is what God called us to do we're uniquely gifted in this area let's go for it let's do it and yeah Leah if it wasn't for you in our corner helping us stay committed to that like I know Ariel might have still been able to go and succeed on it but I know for me I would have been spun out the entire way um and fast forward to today um we just launched the company and within one month of launching we we had uh, nine couples sign on to be clients of ours yep. and um we are now well on our way to impacting a lot of entrepreneur couples in business that's so amazing I love that and yeah it's interesting that 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 idea right of the decision and, and the reason why I linked that, right? Because we don't, we don't want to be married to every decision we need, we make, oh, right? Yeah. But the reason why we specifically chose that in that moment is because we looked at committing to the entire process, right? Because when we marry someone, we're committed to, you know, the, the, in, in, in like, um, you know, in poverty and <laughs> sickness yes. and all of these things and businesses go through those things. And so it was, saying I'm committed to the entire journey, not just to the outcome of what I want this journey to produce at the end and give me. Yeah. Exactly. yeah that was so helpful. And literally every single step of the way, like, I, I think that's what was so cool is like, there were so many ups and downs. Like our, our first stint was building the foundation. And then throughout the rest, it was like, you, um, I, I can't even imagine trying to do what we're doing today if we didn't have yeah. the coaching with you. I guess that, that'd be a way to sum it up because they're going into this level of uncertainty, building a business for anyone who builds a business, yeah. there's so much uncertainty. Like it, the, your ability to be able to expect positive outcomes has to be so strong and your ability to detach from anything that has happened in the past and not bring it with you has to be so dialed in yeah. that if you're, if you're pulling that, past with you it's like you're pulling a boulder behind you trying to like run and right. uh, you were able to basically cut the string from that boulder and let it go in the past so yeah. that way we can just stay focused on building what we want to right so that you're not constantly looking back and then projecting that to the future looking exactly. back projecting that to the future being like this is a possibility right so yeah. I'm like no I've already been there done that I know what where I know how all of that works right yeah. So much, so much more that that can yeah. now happen because I know how all of that works, right? Exactly. Not only that, yeah, and, yeah. and I have, I'll just say one more thing because I think this is so impactful, especially for anybody that's like ever lost, like felt like they lost a dream. This is like in our second stint. I think this was one of the biggest things that happened for me was understanding that just because certain dreams that I had in the past didn't really pan out. That doesn't mean the story is over. That just means that one chapter is complete, but there's still a new chapter to be written and there's still many more chapters. And by the way, just because something didn't happen the way we wanted to in the past, it doesn't mean that A, it won't happen again. And B, when it does happen in your future, it could be better than you even expected in the past. And like understanding that the story isn't over which I know sounds crazy for, you know, a 20 something year old to think that the story was over, but honestly, that's what I felt. I like, I was depressed because I lost any sort of hope towards what I wanted to have in the future. And you restored that. And like, that's, that's like a gift that I can't even quantify yeah. tangibly. Oh, thanks. I'm, I love hearing this from you guys. I love the, the shift and the impact that it has made in your guys' lives. And, um, and I'm th so grateful to have been able to have this conversation and to just hear about, um, about the coaching from your experience. Um, is there anything 
anything that you would end with that you would give maybe as advice to somebody who is considering working with me um, that maybe surprised you about my coaching or um, that, um, you know, you, you thought it would be, or maybe, yeah, just kind of the expectation was different or something like that. Just, I'm not sure exactly what question they might, they might have coming into to hiring a coach, but um, yeah, just maybe any last words that you guys can think of that, that you think that they might uh, benefit from hearing when it comes to, to taking, um, taking action and, and moving forward with their goals and their dreams and working with me. You want to go first? You no, you go for it. Okay. There's so many things I can say. I guess one of the things that pops in my mind is a lot of times when we're making a decision to invest in a coach, there's always the question of ROI. Like what, what's the type of ROI I'm going to get? Like people invest in our business coaching. They expect a certain amount of ROI in terms of revenue. What I can say about mindset coaching is that the ROI is exponentially higher than what you can possibly put a revenue or quanti quantity amount to. What I mean by that is if you invest, let's say $10,000 in Leah to coach you, your return is, is going to be a lot more than let's say 20 or 30,000, because what she's actually going to help you do is rewire the way that you think, yep. the way that you approach life, the way that you approach your relationships, the way that you approach business, the way you, you approach everything in such a way that not only will it tangibly lead to an ROI, most likely in those other places, it's going to lead to intangible ROI in the sense that your relationships will be better, your quality of life will exponentially increase, and you're not going to hold yourself hostage by the thoughts that you have in your mind, which prevent you from actually achieving any sort of level of fulfillment in this life to begin with. So if you put any sort of onus on the emotional, like your, your, your general emotional health and well-being in this life, I would say the ROI is intangible and priceless. So that's, that's kind of what I would say. On that. Yeah. And I would add to that. Um, I think for, <laughs> I don't think this is just a man thing because I feel like this was me as well. Um, but I think for a lot of people, there's almost like a fear of digging because uh, they're, they're afraid of what they're going to find. Like, you know, the idea of going to, you know, a mindset coach feels like I, I, I'm good. I don't want to dig up what's there. And I feel like um, if we hadn't dug up what was there, and I, I don't think that ever ends, you know, I think you, you kind of, you know, throughout yeah. your life, you're always kind of like refining things and tweaking things. But I feel like if you don't dig up the things that are there, you're not only costing yourself time, money, sanity, but you're also going to like, it, it's literally exhausting. Like I like the, when you said it's like, it's like you're pulling your past with you, you like you're pulling a boulder. Yeah. It's exhausting trying to accomplish the things you want to accomplish when you're carrying the past with you and you don't even know it. Or when there's this other thing that's holding you back, that's causing you to self-sabotage the results that you could potentially be achieving right now. Mm -hmm. So I guess, you know, my, my, I guess, word of encouragement there would be, you know, if you're, if you're not sure what you're going to find, or if you think you're good, <laughs> you think everything is good chances are there's something that's slowing you down or holding you back from what it is that you know that you can actually achieve oh my gosh that's so good like yeah like anyone watching this what it what it like if you have a goal in mind that you want to accomplish what yeah. is it worth to accomplish that goal 10 times faster than you would have thought of yeah. like to many people that's worth so much that you can't even quantify mm -hmm. yeah Oh, you guys are awesome. Ariel, that comment made me think that a lot of times people don't understand the difference between like coaching and counseling and therapy and, and things like that. And I think the biggest thing that I usually say to explain that is that, you know, in coaching, so much of it is forward focused, right? Yeah. We dig up when we need to dig up and then we get out of there, right? We, yeah. we, we take care of it where it's done and then we're moving forward yeah. again. And I think that's my favorite part about coaching. Do you feel like that was both of your guys' experience. Like, it wasn't like we like lived in the past the whole time, right? Like we just like. Yeah, no, it was like the, the amount that we lived in the past was basically just like cutting off the, the anchors to it that were negative, that yeah. were not serving us anymore. But the primary focus was building the future mm -hmm. with the, you know, thinking through things in the present based on what we wanted to accomplish in the future. And it allowed us to accomplish those things much yes. faster i would say yeah totally. awesome okay thank you guys so much i've had so much fun listening to you guys retell the stories of our time together and i've just enjoyed this and that you guys are so amazing i absolutely love you guys um and for those that are listening if you are a couplepreneur if you and your spouse are couples that both are entrepreneurs um then you guys should go and check these guys out because they're pretty awesome and they've oh. got 
just so much knowledge in the, in the realm of, of working together as spouses, as well as marketing and everything in that realm. So definitely a shout out to you guys there. Um, and I guess that's, I think we've, I think we've like really taken a good amount of time in this interview. <laughs> so we'll let everybody go now. Thanks so much guys. Um, and we'll see y'all later. All right. Thanks. Bye.